Number one has us looking at two quadrilaterals that are similar to each other, and then we want to select all of the statements that must be true. Um, so I'm just going to go quick over a couple of ways we can be looking at this. So when you're writing proportions, there's some different ways to do that. You can compare um, original side lengths, so like AB, BC, CD, to their image, so an original to their image. Um, and then you would just do the same thing on the other side with another original side to its image. So something like if you wanted to be comparing AB, then you would be comparing that to its image, A prime, B prime, and then another set over here. You can always um, flip these, okay, on both sides. So then you'd be having the image on top versus the original on bottom, and you'd be doing that on both sides. You'd be seeing primes on top and non-primes on bottom. So if I was looking at A prime, B prime on top, A, B would be on bottom, and then a new set on the other side. Um, another thing that you can do is you can compare two different original sides. So I could be comparing like A, B, to BC. And then on the other side, it would need to be the paired image. So if I had AB on top over here, then I would need A prime, B prime over here. And then another image on the bottom paired with this one. So then I'd have like B prime, C prime. And of course, you could flip these um, around. So you could have images on this side um, and originals over here. So as we take a look at these um, proportions, let's look for some type of pattern. So here we have prime over original, prime over original, and they certainly are the paired up ones, okay? So we've got AC with its image, AB with its image, so this one is good. B has original over image, original over image, so this one is good. C has original over image, then it has image over original. So this is bad. Okay, you can't just do original over image and then flip it to the other side and do image over original. That's not good. D has original over original equals image over image, and we do see that they're paired up. And so that is good. And E has an original over not its image, and then an image over not its original. Okay, so it goes original, not an image, but then it also flips. So this one is bad as well. And this one would be bad even if it did this. So even if we had AD over here and then an image on the bottom, this would be bad um, because it's not the paired up original and image. So even if this one had gone original over an image, original over an image, they need to be paired up and they need to be images of each other. Number two uses um, this diagram and it says that both of these lines are um, vertical. And when it tells us that they're both vertical, what that means is that they're parallel to each other. So when we're looking at, and let me get them drawn on here. So when we're looking at these two lines being vertical, that means that they are parallel to each other. And then that means that we have similar triangles in here and proportional sides. And so now they're wanting to know the length of side AD. So that's this side here, which would be a side in this longer or this, sorry, this bigger triangle. So if I draw this, um, it's a side in that bigger triangle versus this smaller triangle that it is proportional to. So if we go ahead and compare some lengths here, um, you can look at the scale factor. And so when we go from kind of this small purple segment to this larger orange segment, um, the scale factor we see is 2.5 because that's 5 divided by 2. So in order to get AD, we'll take its corresponding side in the purple triangle, which is 3. 
and we'll multiply it by the scale factor of 2.5 and you get 7.5. Could also set up a proportion if you would rather. Um, and so we can put AD, which is the large orange side, over its corresponding side in the purple triangle, which is 3, equals the large orange side here on the vertical line of 5, divided by its corresponding side of 2. And then you could cross multiply, which is 15, divided by 2, and you would get 7.5 that way as well. Number three, a quilt is made with squares um, with diagonals, the side length of AB. So from here to here is two and it's a square. So that means this side is also two. Um, and it wants us to find the length of BD. So this length here. So we know that a square also has a right angle here. So we know that it is a right triangle. So if we're looking for BC, we can do the Pythagorean, or sorry, BD we can do the Pythagorean theorem. So BD squared equals two squared plus two squared. Um, and then square the two, which is four. So four plus four. And then we end up with um, BD squared is equal to eight. And then we can square root both sides. So we end up with the square root of eight. And if you would like to um, simplify that radical, we know that 8 is 4 times 2. So the square root of 4 is 2, and then this 2 would need to stay under. So the simplified radical form would be 2 square root 2. Or if you were doing it in decimal form, you would get um, the square root of 8 is approximately 2.82. Then in this next part, it asks us for the area of triangle AEH, so this green triangle here. We um, know that this triangle is being split, or the um, diagonals um, being split here are at the midpoint, so we know that this side is 1 and this side is 1, and we still have a right angle. Area formula is base times height divided by 2. The base and the height are both 1. So 1 times 1 is 1 divided by 2 is 2. So the area of that green triangle is half a unit squared. Number 4, A prime B is parallel to um, AB. So we know these two lines are parallel, meaning that those triangles are going to be similar. What is the length of BB prime? So we know BB prime is only part of one of the triangles. So we're looking at um, that the sides are proportional. So if we take a look at this side compared to this side, that's going to be proportional to this side compared to this side. So if I look, 6 um, divided by 2 equals 3. So I can do that same thing to this 7. So I can just divide it by 2 and we'll get side BB prime. So that's going to be 3.5. Number five, Elena thinks that BC is 16 and a half units, and Lynn thinks BC is 17.1. Do you agree with either of them? Um, and explain your reasoning. So remember that in order to be able to find BC, the two triangles must be similar. Um, so in this case, that basically means that these two lines must be parallel. So we're first going to want to take a look at these sides and make sure that they're proportional. So we want to make sure that this side compared to this side is equal to this chunk compared to this chunk. Um, and so just kind of put them in proportion here. 2 compared to 4, does that equal 5 compared to 9? And that is not true. So neither is correct. Um, because you can't find the missing side length unless the sides are or unless the triangles are similar.
Number six, my knows the measure of two, um, my thinks that, that knowing the measure of two sides is enough to show triangle similarity. Do you agree? Explain your reasoning. Um, and no. So we know that the kind of three ways are by knowing two angles are the same, then we would have angle angle similarity. We also know if we have two sides, we have to know the angle between them is equal and then that those sides need to be proportional. Or if we know all three sets of sides are proportional, then that's enough. But let's kind of show, um, and I'm going to show an example to show my reasoning. Um, and so we could, I'm going to just draw a couple triangles here. So I'm going to draw a triangle like this. Um, it's going to be a right triangle. So I'm going to label this with a, with a right angle mark. And then I'm going to label this side one and this side three. Then I'm going to draw another triangle with proportional sides. So I'm just going to um, double the lengths here, but I'm going to not have it be a right angle. So I'm going to make this um, side be a length of two, and then this side be a length of six, and then I'd be able to find another side length here. So this one could be two, this one could be six, and this angle is not 90 degrees. So I'm just drawing one that's not 90 degrees. And you can see then that these two triangles are not similar, okay, because this third side is not forced to be proportional if we don't have this angle set. So just knowing the two sides would not be enough information. All right, the number seven says line G is dilated um, at center A. Um, what is the approximate dilate or what is the approximate scale factor to bring that G that line to F? So G to F. And so remember lines are infinite. So even though this one looks shorter, okay, they keep going forever. So this is just dilating onto that. Um, and so we can take a look here. I'm just gonna remember when we try to figure out a scale factor, we compare the center of dilation. Um and then through some other points. So I'm just gonna draw this maybe through point, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna put it here. And then I'm gonna look at this point would be dilated to here. So if I just call this um, P, and then this would be P prime on that line of dilation. So then you can see that this looks about two times further away. So then the scale factor appears to be about two.